commentary is back on YouTube from Robert and Tom NYC. Hey, 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 hey. Hey fam, what's up? This is Robert Anton here, robertanton.com, coming to you once again. Let me tell you, I am a little rusty. I have not been doing commentary all summer, but I am here. I am back. The voice is starting. X Factor is starting. Tonight, I'm giving you the voice commentary, that no frills commentary from a singer. I am a singer-songwriter. I do the So You Want to Be a Singer series here on YouTube. Make sure to check that out, and also check out my most recent playlist for... Just all kinds of craziness. I got some travel videos. I got some advice videos. I've got commentary naturally. And I've got some singing videos from gigs and, you know, for me just around the house singing also. All right, let's jump right into it. The Voice is back. Adam Levine, Blake Shelton, CeeLo Green, and Christina Aguilera are in top form where they were tonight anyway. Um, they have a few little changes, a little twist in the, in the way they're going about the show. They're now going to have 16 artists per team, which is a lot, uh, but then it gives them a little extra time to kind of whittle down and get to the best people. And also, they're going to have a chance for you, for one coach to steal from another coach. So I don't know exactly how that's going to happen, but as it unfolds, I will be letting you know. The winner, let's say, will win a recording contract with Universal Music Group and no cash. Where, where the cash at? I mean, when the first year, when, uh, a season wasn't like $100,000 or something like that. Where the money at? Oh, Lord. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to jump right into it by starting out with the coach's performance. They did start me up by the Rolling Stones. And let me tell you, they sounded pretty great. But I was wondering if it was totally live because at one point in one shot, Christina was sitting on Blake's chair, you know, kind of like on his lap, whatever, but on the seat of his chair. And she had her mic and her hands up, right? But her voice was still in the mix. So I'm like, they pre-recorded this. <laughs> I'm trying to catch them little things for you. If you watch it, if you watch the beginning, if they put it up on YouTube or something, it, it's just, she's just sitting there on the chair and she's got her hands all up in the air and her voice is just still singing the song, just like she's right there live on the mic. So I don't know if it was fully live or if it was what we call lit, you know, if it was in the background and they were just kind of singing along. I love the confetti and the excitement. Uh, they sounded wonderful, whether they were live or whether it was pre-recorded. They sounded really good and it was a nice energy to it. For the first contestant, we had Terry McDermott, 35 years old, from Aberdeen, Scotland originally. He did Baba O'Reilly by The Who. Now, it always surprises me how someone speaks with an accent and then they totally lose it when they start to sing, right? Yet no accent at all. And immediately I was like, where's the accent go? <laughs> Was he putting it on or what? But it's just really strange always with me. Do you get that same thing? I do. I thought he had a nice, clean, clear sound, and it cut through. I mean, I, I wrote it cut through the airwaves. It was just, it was just beautiful, and it just, it just had that very sharp, that 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 sound that just. It elevated him above everything else that was going on. I mean, it mixed well, but it sounded, it was just, it just stood alone. It stood on its own. Blake, Adam, and CeeLo all chimed in for him at the last minute, and he chose Blake. Next up, Deborah sang, 25 years old. She did Hey Soul Sister by Train, and she straight up came out. And I mean, came out of the box and said, listen, you know, sexuality is difficult. I'm gay. I guess she said, I don't want nobody, you know, have to worry about if they're going to figure it out because of the way I'm dressed, if they're trying to, uh, whatever. She just said, no fuss, no must. Listen, this is who I am, and I really respect her for that. I liked her sound on stage. Her personality was off the chain. She was just exuding all of this confidence and this love and this excitement. I really, really enjoyed what she was doing. She just lit up the stage for me. Christina and CeeLo chimed in at the same time. I think one of the hardest things to do is if they don't chime in right away because the longer you are singing and you're worried about if anybody's going to turn their chair, a lot of people seem to start losing their excitement and losing their, their confidence. But these two previous artists did not. They both were just there doing their thing, enjoying it, giving out all this love, and at the end, it paid off. Deborah chose Christina as her coach. I thought that was a good choice. Gracia Harrison, 18, was up next. She did I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart by Leanne Rhines. Adam and Blake turned around immediately, and I know why. I can see why. Ben CeeLo. And I was laughing my head off while she was doing the yodeling, but when I think about it, she sounded best there. 
doing the yodeling, in my opinion. I thought she sounded okay on the rest of it, but when she was yodeling, I thought it was just stellar. I don't know if it's just like that it's not something that you should hear all the time. Um, but it was just dead on. It was it was it was great. It was like an R and B singer doing really good riffs and runs. It was just on point for me, and I loved it. Adam said she was the best country singer they'd ever had on the show, and CeeLo agreed. Of course, she chose Blake as her coach, the natural choice with her being a country singer. She went with Blake, and that was a good choice. Garrett Gardner was up next. 16, he did Have You Ever Seen the Rain by Credence Clearwater Revival. Um, his voice was very, very surprising at his age. It was just so old school and rough and cratchety, I want to call it. No judges turned for him. Blake said he heard a lack of control in his vocals, and Christina said he had an incredible rasp, but and that he was 80% there, but that he still needed some work. And she went up to give him a big, big hug to kind of console him and everything. If you are loving this video, please give me a big hug by giving me a thumbs up and making sure to post this on your Facebook and you know your Twitter and send it around to people that you know are watching The Voice and let them know that we are doing commentary, that we are having discussion over here. Make sure to leave your comments down in the comments section. Next up performing was Devin Delora. She was 20, Ain't No Other Man is what she did by Christina Aguilera, okay? She came up with a Christina song and one of the most difficult ones. And when she started out, I mean, it was really strong and she nailed it, okay? I felt like her opening was on point. She nailed her riff, but it was a little different from what Chris, Christina. <laughs> it was a little different from what Christina had done, you know? So I was really enjoying that. I thought she did a really good job on the song, even though her voice is a little thinner and lighter than Christina's. It doesn't have that, mm, that, that meat to it, but she still has a really good sound, a lot of potential. Christina was the first to chime in, then Adam and Blake, and she was kind of running out of breath near the end, so I'm glad that they didn't wait to the end to get to her, you know, because she was, and it's a hard song to keep, keep all that breath and stuff going and get all those runs and everything in, but she did a really good job. Brian Keith was up next, 20 years old. He did It Will Rain by Bruno Mars. And he started out really strong. I mean, these people are really bringing it for this season so far. They were really just nailing it right off the bat. He got all four coaches to turn around. He was a little rough and throaty for me in parts of the song, but he had a really nice, solid sound. CeeLo said he loved to hear him scratch to get to those top notes. And I, I can understand that because even though when I am singing a song, it's a little too high for me, and I'm really, you know, like I'll do Forget You, and I'm really... Ah, they're trying to get up there and pushing it out. Some people say, oh, I love that sound. I love that part of your voice. And, I, and I'm feeling like, oh, I don't really like that. But people do tend to like that sound, so I can hear that. But I am not crazy about that sound personally. Um, Brian chose Adam Levine as his coach. Next up, we had Daniel Rosa, 21. He did Somebody That I Used to Know by Gautier. Now, he was here last season, and he didn't get through. So this time, he was going out, and he said he was coming back, just bringing it, just bringing it for them, that he had gotten a lot more confidence and everything. And this was a good song choice, you know, very contemporary. Everybody's singing it, and he made it his own, which is even better. Good song choice, making it your own. Wonderful, wonderful points already. He had a, definitely a lot more confidence. He was really just doing his thing. I thought his pitch was good and better than last year. Blake and CeeLo turned around first and they remembered him immediately. They were like, oh, you know, it, it was very funny. Adam and, uh, 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 Christina turned, turned, they didn't turn their chair around, but when he was done, their chairs turned around and, and they immediately looked at him like, oh yeah, what's up? You know, Adam ran up and gave him a big hug and the boy had to sit down because it looked like he was about to hyperventilate to me. He was just like, <sighs> he sat down, he got a little breath, then he got back up. He chose CeeLo as his coach. This could have went either way for me. I thought that any, he could have went with somebody else, but he chose CeeLo. So I guess that, that's who he wanted to go with. Next up was Anita Antoinette, 22 years old. She did No Woman, No Cry by Bob Molly. She's from Jamaica. So she had a very good vibe going, a nice sound. The crowd was with her. But no judges turned around for her. And I'm like, wow. And I was thinking, if I was listening to her, would I have turned? I probably would have. I probably would have because she sounded good. She was doing little things of her own with it. You know, she really had the vibe and stuff going. So I probably would have turned. They actually allowed her to sing it a second time a cappella because, you know, Adam was like, well, you know, you really weren't really bringing that feeling of the song to me, like really bringing that, you know. So she said, oh, I can do that. I can do that. And she brought a lot more feeling to the song. But... 
I think that kind of decision should have been made initially by her and her advisors when she was doing the song, when she was rehearsing the song, she should have been knowing that she was going to bring this certain something to it because you know sometimes you only get one chance and she got that one chance and didn't exactly put it across the way she did the second time she did it and again the judges were already turned around they were already looking at her and everything so they could see the emotion and all that this stuff and, and, and when they're not in front of her and they're not here they can just hear it in her voice and they weren't getting it and obviously she felt like she wasn't giving it and she gave it a little more she's a berkeley college of music graduate seemed like a very good musician. When she was told exactly what she was lacking, she immediately brought it. But she should have had someone telling her that before she actually did the audition and maybe she would have gotten a chair to turn. Some people were saying, oh, I hope she gets a wild card and all that. I think that's, that. I hope she does and it would be great for her. I don't feel like the type of singer she is that she would win the competition against the other people that have already gone before her and gone through. But I, I just feel like, you know what, you got this chance and you kind of blew it. Um, so, mm, no second chances? I don't know, but maybe she will. Either way, it's fine with me. But remember people, especially those who are my singers who are watching, you should be thinking about all these things when you first come in. Forgetting about all your nervousness and all this and saying, what do I need to put this song across to bring these feelings to the song that I want to give? and do that the very first time. Joe Kirkland, Joe Kirkland was up next. He did Gives You Hell by All American Rejects. Adam and Blake chimed in right away. He had a lot of energy and a good voice, very infectious, and he chose Adam as his coach. Jessica Sharp was up next, she's 23. She did Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield. Love the song choice. As soon as it started, I was like, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Loved it. You know, it's kind of old school, but it still got that, it's always that current contemporary sound, you know. She had Adam singing along with her, you know, everybody was vibing. I liked her sound and her rendition. I love the little key change section she did, but no judges turned their chair for her. And I was like, wow, wow, I definitely would have turned around for her. And she was beautiful. When they turned around, they were like, Oh my God, you know, Christina came up with doling out the hugs, you know, consolation hugs or whatever. And the girl said something in the beginning that caught me. One song, one chair could change my life. And it didn't happen for her. And it should have. I felt like it should have. And I wrote, I think I wrote on Twitter, any other show, her looks would have gotten her over that extra hump because she had the sound. She sounded good. She took good song choices, but she didn't make it through. Just didn't make it. Some other people who didn't make it through were Danny Hunter Jones, Jamie Pickett, Odysseus, a little 15 year old guy. They were rejected. Sorry, they played those and I tried to catch the names as they went by. You know, just to give them a little shout out and just to let you know, keep, keep striving, keep striving. Trevin Hump was up last. 18 years old, he did Listen by Beyonce. I oh, love it. Oh, listen, oh, listen. <laughs> Let me tell you, this could have been, this could have been a train wreck. It really could have been, but, 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 to my notes before I go crazy, Christina chimed in immediately because he was like, listen, and she was like, bam, right away because his tone was on point. It sounded good. He had that touch, that feeling going on. Just choosing this song gave him points with me, and I was shaking, waiting for him to hit the big notes, right? <laughs> and he didn't disappoint. He wore this song out, and for a guy to do this song in the original key, wear it out, I was just like, hey, up, uh, big ups. Okay, I got my winner right here. It was like, it was like that Jesse Campbell moment. You know, it was like, yeah. Blake and CeeLo chimed in, but Adam sat it out. Um, the boy was amazing. That's all I got to say. I thought he was the best of the night. He chose CeeLo, and I was hoping, I was hoping that he would choose CeeLo for his coach because of, one, the genre that he would eventually be in, because of his look, and because of that voice. Very much matches CeeLo's kind of range, kind of sound. I think a lot more depth even than CeeLo, um, and... I feel like that he, he he chose the right coach. And I think choosing the right coach is also a part of the game. And he did a good job on that. There are more blind auditions coming up Tuesday and Wednesday. 
I will be doing commentary tomorrow, Tuesday night, but I will not be doing Wednesday commentary for The Voice unless I get some extra time and I get to do it after I do X Factor because X Factor is Wednesday and Thursday. And I will also be doing X Factor commentary for you guys. This is Robert Anton, robertanton.com. Chime in, let me know what you thought, and make sure to send this around. Let people know the commentary is back on YouTube from Robert Anton NYC. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.